we can call the kit. Uh, today I'm going to be sensed about the uh, lexical memory access the models in the password domains. And the goal of this presentation is I want to I would like to present the lexical memory search and retrievers in the password domain. And I would like also would like to present the models of memory search, memory retrievers, and the password pairs in this domain. And in this study, in this in this studies, the crossword uh, domain studies, uh, we interested in the crossword experts and the worst memories and retrievers performance. And uh, and because the crossword is the very rich of the knowledge base, and we we are uh, curious about uh, how the experts uh, store that keep that uh, store that in kind of information and retrieves and or use it uh, when they want to use this. And so it's very interest uh, it's very interesting interest for us and so we have this kind of a study. So first I uh, I would like to show you how to play the crossword puzzle. You can see this the uh, this pattern uh, the five space for five letter words. So there are many words that can fit into this pattern like this side. Floor. <laughs> uh, users. Three. Models. Uh, uh, given. Or even. There are so many words that can fit into this pattern. And so when I add all at the middle of this pattern, so it reduces the number of <coughs> the words that can fit into this pattern a lot. Above. Oh, and, <laughs> <laughs> and then when I add V into this pattern, so it's always hard to uh, generate the, uh, some words to fit into this pattern. And so I give you the the clues, the semantic clues. So now you can get the yes, yes, that's correct. So you can see that the. <laughs> Uh, the cues for the memory retrievers in this study is that might be the, the semantic cues, the powerful push, uh, the letters that already fill in O, O, and B, and uh, the word link is in this in this uh, in this example is five, and uh, or even the positions of the letters that already fill in, and. Uh, so far, we have done so many studies about the crossword puzzles. <laughs> and uh, I would like to review uh, some of uh, our studies that uh, uh, that's related to this presentation. And uh, the first study is that uh, uh, we would like to investigate the lexical uh, memories in this domain. So we, uh, this is about the crossword play. Uh, I was, uh, uh, the participants in this study uh, were the, our undergrad students as the NOAS, the crossword NOAS, and uh, the experts, the crossword experts uh, that we recruit from the American crossword tournament. <coughs> and uh, we, they had to, in this study, they had to solve the crossword puzzle in the puzzle uh, in the limited time in 25 minutes. And we would like to see the how they <coughs> solve the puzzles differently between the crossword, uh, between the, the experts and the novice. Mm -hmm. And we collect the all the all their key store in every characters and the uh, and the response times in order to analyze analyze this uh, analyze the data and their performance further. Here is the result from the crossword play. And the size, the experts, and this one, this one is the NOAA's the performance. I don't know. In the in this video, the uh, the NOAA's the uh, we increase the speed in for the NOAA's video four times faster than their normal rate, normal speed in solving the puzzles. So you can see that the experts try to solve uh, the, this around uh, this area first. Now this area, and then they moved 
he moved to another area and then saw this. But for the Novas, they saw it there. <coughs> they tried to find the clues that they can solve this first. So they have to move around the puzzle grip and find the, the clues that they can solve. So from this study, we found that the, the experts uh, are better in both speeds and accuracy. And then for both the uh, for both word length and uh, crossword frequency, uh, it affects the response time. Uh, crossword frequency is the, the numbers of the uh, the crossword uh, clues and answer clue answer pair that appear in the that appears in the major uh, newspapers uh, such as the USA Today or the New York Times. And for the frequency effect that for the experts, that might be because they solve the puzzle a lot. So they know our, our possible study, our that experiments, the, the, the studies, the puzzle, that's quite easy for them. So they know all the answers. And for the word link that affects the performance, that might be because the typing speed or the typing a few letters in the expert, or that might be because the if the word is a short, a short word, and it's easy to retrieve. And the experts are better than the novels because they have the so in summary, the experts are better than the novels because they have the classical skills and strategies in solving puzzles by producing fewer letters in its answer. However, in these studies, you can see, right, in the puzzle is quite big. And there are 78 clues. So it's very complicated for me to analyze the data to get the response time for each clue because they, they may put this answer and it might affect another side across and down. So it's very hard for me to analyze the data. So we have the second study. This study we call it the crossword programs. So in this study, the, uh, our participants are still the, the, uh, the undergrad students, our undergrad students as a crossword novice and a crossword expert from the American crossword tournament. And in these studies, the participants uh, saw the asymmetric clues and some some fill in letters. And they have to find the answer that associates with the semantic clues and the, and the pattern in 30 seconds. If the answer is incorrectly, we will give one more letter and we will keep doing that until the, they can answer it correctly or, the, or it's thumbs up in 30 seconds. And for each, uh, in these studies, the, there are the two levels of the semantics and orthographics, the difficulties. And we also use digital source, this data, to develop uh, the memory access models for the, in the crossword domain. This is the, the, the software for our experiment look like. And for example, uh, uh, for example, if the answer is the <coughs> Coffee. So the easy autographic cues is look like this. Maybe look like this, and the difficult autographic cues might be like this, and the easy semantic cues might be the Starbucks specialty, and the difficult autographic cues might be the ice cream flavor. And the result from this study is uh, we found that both semantics and autographics the difficulties affects the crossword performance. And we found that the, the semantics and orthographic uh, difficulty have the negative uh, interac interactions between each other. And we, and we de uh, developed this uh, to the models and used the uh, corpus, corpus of the crossword course answer pairs to develop this, the model. For the crossword <coughs> and the corpus, for the crossword models, uh, we adapt the, the recognition palm decisions models and the patient's uh, recognition decisions models uh, to this domain. And uh, uh, 
uh, we propose that there are the two different routes that incorporate in this kind of the memory access, uh, which are the semantic routes and autographic routes. So therefore, these examples, if the answer is the, the word print, so the semantic association is the monthly payment or the monopoly payment. And the autographic associations, associations might be the R, E, N, T. Yeah. And the goal of this study, the goal of this study is to determine the, whether the, these two routes are, the, are coactive or the independent uh, as the dual do, do do routes access. And, uh, and B, uh, and we fit the simula simulations we saw with the, the from the yes, from the human with the human data and uh, the and uh, the and the parameters that varies between the uh, those simulations is the third set and recovery parameters. Recovery parameters is the uh, the values that we use to use for the reconstructing <coughs> the semantics probabilities to increase the semantic probabilities so it's higher so you can get the, that work easier. And this is the result from the models uh, and we have the we built we developed the five different models. The first one is the autographic models one the autographic models. Oh, the x-axis is the semantics difficulty, uh, difficult and easy, difficult, easy, difficult, easy. And uh, the y-axis is the probabilities of success of getting the correct answers. And here is the human data, the NOAA's data and the expert data. And uh, the first one is the autographic models. You can see that for the auto autographic models, you just already the uh, autographic route, so there is no uh, interactions between the semantics difficulty at all. And for the semantic models, there is no interactions between the autographic uh, difficulty. And for the co coactive models, in the coactive models, we <coughs> use both routes simultaneously together at the same time, and uh, there is no, for this this model and alternative browse models, there is no interactions uh, between the uh, semantic uh, difficulties and uh, uh, between the semantic difficulties. So we pick the dual routes models, which have the same uh, <coughs> negative interactions. We have the same negative interactions as the same as the hu our human data and have the lowest uh, root mean square errors with our data, with our human data. So we pick that one. So it's, so dual routes model is preferable for both the experts and the worst uh, parameters. And uh, so it means that the both, uh, both louder semantics and autographic routes access the lexical memory indefinitely. And then, and because of from that models, they can solve just only uh, one crew at a time. So mm -hmm. one so one crew at a time, and uh, and is uh, is have not been the validated with the time constraint. So we develop another model. It's called uh, the crossword model to solve the crossword in the puzzle grid. Actually, there are so many the crossword solver in the area of the computer sciences, uh, artificial intelligence, of course. But uh, the researchers in that field are the, from the computer sciences. They use the traditional the AI, of course, such as the uh, search, uh, constraints, satisfaction, uh, optimizations, or the backtracking, backtracking process. Uh, the, the well known the crossword solver is the Dr. Fields that's very famous famous in the crossword tournament. Mm -hmm. And uh, however, uh, these traditional <coughs> AIs, of course, uh, do not use the human-like 
solution strategies. And they use the many data uh, resources, <coughs> such as the puzzles, dictionaries, grammaticals, and semantics information, or even the Wikipedia. Can, let me just point out that um, the Dr. Phil, which is this AI approach, um, it sort of competes in the tournaments. And I think in the, this last year, it finished about 100, in 100th place out of like 600 people, oh, yeah. which is, well, maybe not, maybe 200th place, somewhere in there, which is really, really, really good. And any puzzle that it solves, that it can solve, it solves in like seven seconds. And it does this by actually solving the puzzle hundreds and hundreds of times, and using an objective function to find the best one of those. Mm -hmm. And then using a bunch of heuristics based on old clues and things like that. A person only solves the puzzle once, and they take two, a really good person takes two to five minutes, and everyone else takes 15 minutes to three hours, however long you, know, you are. So it's better than 99% of humans at this. It's not as good as the best humans, but on simple puzzles, it's better. But the fact is, it doesn't solve like it doesn't solve like humans. It solves mm -hmm. like an AI approach. Yeah, it just solves. It, solves it like uses a computer and solves yeah. thousands and thousands and picks the best, rather mm -hmm. than what people do is one word at a time. And or you can uh, search it in YouTube. The fields crossword solving. Yeah, there is the. The human skill in solving puzzles for the human uh, need, uh, requires the combinations uh, of many skills such as the decisions making, pattern recognition, lexical memory access, and motor skills such as the typing <laughs> and moving in the grid. So in this uh, uh, crossword models, in this crossword models, we propose the alternative crossword play models that is inspired by the human experts rather than the optimization approach. In order to uh, understand how experts use and combine knowledge and those skills to solve hard, hard problems with the strong constraints. And, and uh, because in order to create the the models, the computational models, we uh, we uh, came up with uh, a few assumptions about the, these computational models. First one is the quiz strategies. From these quiz strategies, uh, as the I showed you the, from the previous video, that we we observed the, the experts and know us uh, solving the puzzles, solving the grid puzzles. So we came up with the two strategies. The first one is the optimal movement. So the optimal movement is the, you can see that the experts try to complete the, the at least area first, and then uh, they are likely to solve the, the clues that already have the, some letters filled in and close to their current positions. So in this, in this strategy is the optimal movement. So we combine compromise between the numbers of the built-in letters and the distance between the current positions and the, between the current positions and the unsolved clues. And another strategy is the random movement. Is this strategy is based on the NOAA's play puzzles. So uh, we in this NOAA's they choose the next clue to solve randomly in order to find the easy one to solve first. So in this graph, it shows the, the proportions of letters periodically solved between humans and the models. And this line, this line, the green and the blue line is the, this green line is the mean, the average expert performance for between the proportions and the group groups. And the, the blue line is the NOAA's performance. They can solve the already the for these schools from the LPA. And for the models, this line, this dash line, uh, is 
is the optimal the model with the optimal <laughs> movement. And this dashed line is the random model with the uh, random models with the random movement. And you can see that the pattern between the the experts and the uh, uh, optimal movements is similar. Fold up first and then. And And another <coughs> other uh, parameters are the frequencies and palm. For the frequencies or recoveries from the previous models, are the, we have the two levels of frequencies in this in this uh, models, the 15s and 0.5s. And times for the time parameters, uh, we use the average uh, typing speed per one character, which equal to the 0.28 seconds in this study, in this uh, model simulations, and uh, for the and we need to uh, we have to the estimate the solving time for this school. So we came up with these equations that the 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 total the solving time for each school is equal to the summations of the reading times plus the n is the numbers of the candidate answer that the the model generates be before they got the first clue that fit the pattern, multiplied by the retrieval times and plus the word length, word length multiplied by the typing times. So we get the, the solving time for each clue. Yeah. So is that average typing time, is that from um, your data or is no. that out of like the uh, what is it? The, like gongs? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Sorry. SCI, SCI. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. And so, for the time parameters, we have two levels of time. Times the fast and slow. For the fast, for the fast one, we have the, the reading times is 0.5, the table time is 0.5, and for the slow one, is the reading time is 3 seconds and the retrieval time is 3 seconds. And uh, we need to estimate the moving time in the grid when they move. So we, as we think that we estimate that the moving time in the grid is the 0 0.14 seconds per cell. <coughs> so and then we have to add this to the total times when, they, when the models in the, our simulations. And so the the models uh, move between the current positions to another code to solve by using the Manhattan, <coughs> Manhattan distance. <coughs> so here is the simulation results. I will show you between the optimal and random strategies to solve the puzzles. One is the optimal movement. So the models uh, uh, that is try to solve the the one that has the, some letters fill in first. However, the, for the random, you can solve faster because they pick the next clue to solve randomly. It's it's, it's stuck because this answer is uh, incorrect. You cannot find the answer to match this. Mm. So it started with the wrong answer, so that's yeah, why it was having problems. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's unlucky. It's unlucky. Mm -hmm. also, yeah. So that's why it's getting held up, where this one is just mm -hmm. keeping going with finding yeah. the next clue that it can solve. You can see that the random the models can do better at the beginning yeah. compared to the <laughs> optimal models. When does the optimal model switch to going from one group to another, like giving up on? Uh, we have the the potential, the maximum, that the, if they try this cool so many times and they cannot solve it, it cannot solve it, so they have to pick the next one randomly. Yeah. Hmm. So you do have a, something's wrong here. Yeah. Stop working there, kind of a... Yes, 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, like when experts give up on an area, what parallel can you draw between the experts and the models if an expert is looking at one area of the crossword and yeah. they're like, I can't do anything yeah. with this yet and they move on, or mm -hmm. does that would never happen with experts? I think it's about the time. They, mm -hmm. they try to do that for a while, they cannot do it, so they have to give up. So they do have a giving up yeah, point? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is the random actually random or is it going by just the shortest time to figure out the. No, it's actually random. Okay. Yeah. So it's not going by ease of lexicon? No. Or no. no. So ease of the clues? No. No. This okay. Is the random, yes. We have okay. we random all the uh, seventy-eight clues, unsolved clues, seventy-eight unsolved clues, and then pick one, pick one, pick one, pick this one. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They can pick the same one, but it's very hard. To, the probability is very low. Right. You have so many clues to solve that. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, I think the the lesson of this is that if if you're really good, a random strategy isn't bad. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But if you're not really good, then you have to be careful about non-random strategies because like the one on the left, it gets stuck. Yeah. It, gets, it, it should be abandoning it sooner probably, <coughs> but how do you figure out when you should be abandoning it? That's a hard problem. Yeah. I mean, that's the optimal stopping problem in OR. And it's one that a lot of people uh, have studied in psychology and decision making, but, but there's, it's, you know, it's a tough problem figuring out do I search more or do I choose what I have or give up? Or yep. And for the, we have the egg <coughs> difference models, and this is the parameters of the simula simulations models. One to four models, uh, model one to model four has the optimal movement, and the model five to model X is the random movement. And it's the, the combinations between the, also the combinations between the recoveries and time parameters. And you can see the, here is the results from the <coughs> simulations from eight models. You can see that the, the, all the random, this, this one is the optimus and this one is the random strategies. This look the same. The results for the accuracy, for both accuracy and time is all the same. These two, two lines, this, this line is the human, uh, the expert data. This line is the NOAA's data. These are the color, <coughs> all colors are the, the, from the models, the result from the models for the time. And these two lines are the model one and five. This is the, all the skills are the same except the, the strategies. It's going to produce the same result for both mm. time and accuracy. So we found that the, only the, uh, only the recovery parameters that uh, have the significant uh, impact to the, the difference, uh, differentiates between the, those models. For the uh, contributions uh, from this graph, so you can see that the, even the interface model is still performed uh, worse than the, the human, the, the average expert's uh, performance. And for the worst model, worst models, uh, <coughs> it's uh, still outperformed the, the, no, the average uh, no worst data. And uh, Moving strategies, uh, we found that moving strategies cannot explain the experts and the OWASP performance. And uh, optimal strategies, uh, and you can see that the optimal strategy limits the, the model's chance to expose the many clues uh, <coughs> as possible in the parcel grid. And uh, only the retrieval fluencies provides the best explanations of the experts and the worst the difference. For the our future study, our next studies now we 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 are running the studies to determine the, <coughs> the response times for to find the response time for each school. 
because now you can see from the modules that the was the uh, solving time is a free parameter. We just gave it up, yeah. And uh, we, uh, how can we, uh, how can we apply the, uh, how can we use these findings and our software to the, to the real world problems? So we are thinking about this a lot, and then we, we think that the, we are thinking that the. Uh, we will use these findings and the password software in the as a second language uh, learning tool. Hmm. Uh, so far, we know we knew a lot about the uh, the memory uh, access, uh, memory search, and retrievals, and uh, and all skills uh, such as the decision making uh, that's used in this uh, password domain from the uh, <coughs> speakers. So we have the question, uh, we want to know that, uh, well, so what will happen if we use the, we do the studies with the, with the non-native English speaker, like me, and uh, I will perform the, I will improve, can I improve the English skill from this the software, from this game? And uh, so, and uh, instead of the learning the English just only in the classroom, so we can use this software as a tool to help the second non-native English speakers, uh, second language learning learners uh, to improve their English skill. So, okay. Questions and comments. <coughs> so I'm wondering. So just kind of thinking about this, that I'm just thinking there might actually be kind of a switching of strategy at yeah. some point in this. So, you know, when you first start out, you're going to yeah. look for, you know, you're going to look at more of the clues mm -hmm. than the, the letters, right? Yeah. So, like an expert, I would guess they'd start by filling in mm -hmm. some of the clues in that yeah. top corner, and then they're like, oh, well, this is probably this word, let me double check that that's it with the clue. Yeah. So is there any way to kind of incorporate kind of that, I don't know, like if a weighting maybe mm -hmm. of one root versus the other root yeah. might help to accommodate some of that difference between your expert performance and where your models are? Because I'm wondering if it's something like that. Yeah. So like if an area becomes saturated to a certain point, they actually yeah. switch to the other strategy yeah. because now that's more useful to them. Yeah. So I I don't know. Just thinking about it, like how I would, like how I approach that problem is, you know, at first I'm going to look for the clues I know in that corner. Yeah. But then once I get to a point where almost all the letters are in, I'm going to be yeah. like, oh well, it could be this word. Yeah. Let me double check with yeah. a clue. So yeah, actually, in the the crossword the the crossword play models, I do. We first we have to I compare the probabilities between the these two rows first. Uh -huh. So, uh, which one is higher to get okay. the answer? So if it's higher, this the, if the semantics is higher, it okay. really has to be like that. If you have this, if you have no orthographic, no letter at all, so the orthographic route is uh, the the probability is very low to get that answer. Right. Yeah. So we will go to the semantics. Okay, so yeah. it's based, it's weighted first, uh, based on the number of letters. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that, that's the, the <coughs> model actually tries both routes. Okay. But it doesn't do it smartly. It does okay. it randomly. Mm. Oh, okay. Um, so if it fails at one route, it tries the other route, but it's fast enough that it, yeah. it can do that. Okay. That's what the dual route model mm. is. Right, okay. And, and that's, that produces the signature of the interaction. Okay, so, yeah. So it really does that. It's, it maybe could be a little smarter by in a bigger picture of saying now I'm going to solve this way, now I'm going to solve that way. Right. But, but that's... But I'm wondering if that same that. strategy uh, approach is like when you look at the models so when you're doing the dual pro, or do, dual route model for the novices mm -hmm. it doesn't track real well with that interaction. I'm wondering if part of that is as their strategy choice is different than what you're modeling. You know, because if it's 
you know, randomly choosing between those yeah. ones, whichever one is easiest to come up <coughs> with a solution, that might be part of it. Is that a novice might rely more on one than the other, yeah. so that there you would get that interaction, mm -hmm. more of that interaction that you got with your data. So okay. yeah. that might be part of why your model's <laughs> outperforming the data is because like a novice doesn't switch back and forth at the rate they should mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, so they rely too much on one strategy over the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Might be part of it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Just thinking about it. <coughs> Actually, uh, our from the from the puzzle with the simulations, we found that the in for the models they usually use the semantics right? okay. more than the orthography grounds. Okay. Right. So it is the, successful. Yeah. yeah. The orthographic you can't solve most of these orthographically unless you have yeah, most of them. One space there. Yeah. yeah. You can do that. Yeah. So I get so if you're thinking about using this as a tool for English as a second language learners, are you like um, talking to the um, multi literacy center? Yeah. Um, I'll talk to someone. And then the Canterbury House too might be another one. They do yeah. some um, tutoring, so that might be another yeah, yeah. good place for you yeah. guys to contact. It. Other questions? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I hope that we have a meet and greet. Grad student.